Councillor Cordova. I have some questions, please, Mayor. My first question is, after the advertising... Let's assume that this goes through, if it does. After advertising its intent to sell these properties, will these individual properties come back to Council for approval one by one by one? Mr Smee. Uh, through you, Mayor, they'll, they'll come back as, as a block report. There won't be single reports. They'll be similar to this report. Thank you. They'll come back all, all together. My next question is, have we investigated whether these seven properties could be mortgaged or used as collateral for future investment rather than selling them, use them as collateral? So, sorry, what was the question? Have we investigated whether we can use these seven properties rather than selling them, whether we can use them as collateral to, say, get a loan rather than selling them? Uh, have we, uh, let me rephrase, yeah, no, have I'll we get investigated the question, Mr. Smee, alternative Albert. financing? Yeah. <laughs> mm, through you, men, no, we have not. Okay. Vacant land sales are up 1.6% this year and farmland value, for what it's worth, is up 6% per year, year-on-year -year average over 20 years. So my question is roughly how much money has the council made in capital gains so far from the increase in value of these properties, to the best of our knowledge? Mr. Smee. Uh, through you, Mayor... A lot of these properties have been acquired through historical subdivisions. So uh, other than 110 Channel Highway and the 31 Gamala Road, they're not properties that we've purchased. So to be able to provide a figure in relation to the capital gain is, is a question I just can't answer. Thank you. Is it true, though, that... the the value, there would have been a present value of those properties at the time they came into council's ownership and there is a present value of those properties now. Um, is it not true that there would have been capital gain, there would have been a capital value increase of the value of those properties between the dates that they were acquired <laughs> into the council portfolio and today? Hasn't the value of the land gone up? Mr Smee. Uh, through you, Mayor, consistent with um, real estate prices over the past... 30-odd years, yes, real estate's increased and these property values would have increased as well. Thank you. And I think it's at about 6% per year, but I, I stand to be corrected on that. How much is it costing council to maintain these properties per year, roughly? Mr Smee? Uh, through you, Mayor, that, that really varies depending on what property we're talking about. For example, Lot 2 Mount Pleasant Road um, needs to be slashed three or four times a year. Other properties sit there and require no maintenance. So uh, without referring to our works department, I, I couldn't put a dollar figure on it, but it, it varies depending on the nature of the block and their maintenance needs. Is it fair to say that it's not an exorbitant amount of money? Mr Smee. Oh, you'd need to define exorbitant, but... More than 120000 No, no, it's, it's not. No. Okay. Um, with the Environmental Offset Fund, we, we only spent that money this year, even though it started in 2004. So for 16 years, the money sat in an account. Um, what's to stop that happening this time around? My question is, what enforceable instrument is there in this report um, that says that you, we definitely will spend the money within 12 months? It definitely won't be 16 years. A long. motion of council will do that for you. Okay. So if in the next iteration of this... Uh, if this passes tonight and it comes back to council and there is a motion of council that directs our staff to do X, Y and Z with the money generated, then that is what has to happen. Okay, that satisfies me. My question is now about um, how much money is currently available to undertake the, quote, much-needed upgrades on other council-owned recreational infrastructure and infrastructure such as that identified in the open space and playground strategy? How big is the pool of money that we currently have? Mr Smee. Through you, Mayor, if you're referring to the public open space reserve, um, bearing in mind that we've just committed 250000 of that towards the Silverwater Park upgrade, last time I looked, the balance of that account was about 900000 So take two hundred and fifty off that, and that's all we've got left. Okay. So there are 73... Well... I noted before, so this is my question, about the playground uh, strategy. There are 45 playgrounds there and 18 of them require critical upgrades. I just note that on the website uh, and the playground strategy I've been given, 
there are 54 playgrounds listed and they're all TBD to be determined in terms of their actual condition. So I don't actually have a list of which 18 playgrounds there are that are unacceptable. But my question is, which of those 18 playgrounds, and I don't know where those playgrounds are, which of those 18 playgrounds do we intend to upgrade using the money from the sale of these seven properties? Mr Smee. Uh, through you, Mayor, the, the playground audit is on our website and that details the 45 that were looked at and reported to Council earlier this year. Uh, of those 18, I would need to refer to our urban designer and come up with a list of those that are most critical and the works that we would intend to do. We, we haven't looked into that detail as yet. I guess once we have an idea of the quantum of funds available, we would come back to Council with a recommendation as to um, what we consider to be the priority projects and, as the Mayor indicated, that if there was a desire to put a time frame around that, then that could be included at that time. Thank you. Do you anticipate, uh, through you, Mayor, do you anticipate that the sale of these seven properties will fully cover the cost of working on the 18 playgrounds? Or will it be 10% or will it be 200% of the cost? Do we have any ballpark figure as to how much we're going to spend from the sale of these Councillor properties? Councillor Cordova, these are questions that you can ask um, at the next, when this comes back to Council, if it comes back to Council, if this passes, because um, you're asking staff questions they obviously don't have the answers to and you know they don't have answers to. I, so don't, what, I didn't know that they don't have answers well, to. Well, OK, Mr Smee, how, good luck to you, Mr Smee. <laughs> Uh, through you, Mayor, I, I guess if you look at the average playground today, um, you really don't get much change out of a couple of hundred thousand dollars in terms of putting in a contemporary playground that has all of the elements that are expected. So, you know, that's my best answer. And if we're talking 18 playgrounds, we're not really going to scratch the surface with the um, proceeds of the sale of these properties. Thank you. I, I've got a couple more questions and I assure you I'm not trying to be vexatious, Mayor. Through you, Mayor, item 38 of our open space strategy specifically says develop a local play space or park with a formal trail connection to Hearn Road at either 22 Opal Drive or 41 Hearn Road to meet an identified gap in this area. And obviously 41 Hearn Road is one of the ones that is proposed to be sold. Can we infer from this that we therefore plan to do something with 22 Opal Road? Mr Smith. Uh, through you, Mayor, I suggest the consultant that recommended that was unaware of the fact that 30, 41 Hearn Road was zoned residential. Um, the, the recommendation was an either or, either you look at 41 Hearn Road or 22 Opal. So given that um, the residential zoning of the Hearn Road property and given that it is intended to maintain an access through that property um, to the um, reserve below, that Opal Drive section would be what we would be looking at. But again, it's a medium priority and there's lots in the high priority and it wouldn't be one of our immediate um, priorities to look at. Item 69 of that same open space strategy, is uh, it says, quote, investigate further uses for the property south of Hotel Bruni. Am I right in um, assuming that that is referring to the property that we're talking about selling at Main Road, Alonna? Mr Smith. Through you, Mayor, that, that's correct. And, and once again, our staff have assessed potential future uses and we believe that the land at the, um, where the Alona Hall is, it is much better to create a consolidated precinct there than to look to put any sort of recreational infrastructure at this particular block. Further to that, there are only four high priority items within the open space strategy that relate to Bruni. There are only four of them. Two of them relate to selling land and the third one is item 69, which talks about investigating future uses of this property that we're now planning on selling. So three out of four of the high priority things on Bruni are about selling off land. 
That just leaves the last one being a new local play space for the foreshore at Dens Point. Dens Point is a 45 minute drive away. So I think it's a fair question and maybe somebody can answer it. What are we, in return for losing this last bit of public land that's owned down there, what can the people of Alana expect to get, noting that there's nothing left in the high priorities? Of the great, great question, Councillor Cordova, because I can let you know that number 15 on our high priority playgrounds to fix is the Alana Foreshore Playground, and it's actually only a few hundred metres away from the land in question. So um, I think what Mr Smee and his team are are proposing is that if the land was sale, uh, if that la piece of land was sold, then the playground that is only a few hundred metres away, um, being one of the 18 high priority locations, could be upgraded for the people of Alona. That's wonderful news. And therefore, can we also assume that if and when 110 Channel Highway Taruna is sold, that there will be work done using the revenue from that Taruna sale on Taruna Park play space, which is a high priority there? Uh, Mr Smee. Uh, through you, Mel, I, I don't want to, um, again, preempt what our recommendation might be in relation to what are the priorities. Um, I mean, you would, you would expect that there would be a linkage between the area in which we've sold a property and the area in which we're going to invest the funds, but, you know, without going through some sort of rigorous process to look at the priorities, I don't want to sit here now and guarantee that. So why didn't we find um, the... Because I'm assuming the answer to, to my, a similar question about Taruna is true for, for Kingston. Like when we sell the Kingston one, there's no guarantee about which particular place in Kingston will get the money. When we sell the Snug one, there's no guarantee about which places in Snug will get the money. But assuming all that to be true, why did we decide uh, to to do it this way, as in putting up a bunch of uh, advertising our intent to sell without simultaneously advertising our intent to upgrade specific playgrounds and play spaces. Well, Councillor Cordova, as if we would announce to the community that we were going to upgrade play, play spaces when we haven't got a decision to sell the property that would allow us to do that. You can't sit there and criticise the idea of um, selling properties and then say, oh, well, you should have advertised your intent to use the revenue to build play spaces. You can't have it both ways. That's the point here. My, okay. Another question then is, if we assume that there is a capital value increase of 6% per year, which may not be true, but if we do assume that, is there not an opportunity cost? Let's say it's $2 million worth of property that we've got, if we, every year that we hang on to it, it's going up by $120,000 per year, and every year that we sell it and don't immediately implement those funds, um, uh, we, you know, we're going to get 1.5% in a bank for having that money there. So my question yeah, is point why... Of, point of order. My point of order is on meeting procedure. I think Councillor Cordova can either ask the questions or answer them. I don't think he can do both in the same preamble. Look, um, I, I, have to, I have to agree, Councillor Street. No, I'm, I'm being... I think you've been really generous so far and I, I assume you've got a substantive contribution you want to make and I, I don't know how long you've taken so far but um, the meeting I reckon you've stretched them right to their limit so far and um, interested in having to say not don't want to cut you off but I think this would be a good time to start a substantive contribution. That's okay. I will uh, collect my thoughts and then I'll, I'll go in a minute. Thanks. If that's okay with you. Because there's other people who want to speak. And well, I that I've at the moment, there's no other lights on, so you can choose. We'll either be closing the debate or, or you'll be making a substantive. I will make my substantive starting Thanks. now. Thank Councillor you. Councillor Cordova. In my deliberations here, I'm going to be giving significant weight to key priority area 3 and 3.1, as well as 1.5, 3.2 and 3.5 of the strategic plan. Um, I'm happy to talk about the individual merits and, and uh, disadvantages of each individual property, but I recognise that I don't have enough time to do that, but I can certainly do that offline with whoever wants to. My personal values here are going to come into it because as part of this decision, um, of course, I want to see an increase in open space, public open space, and I absolutely support the intent of the transparency, the fact that we're advertising an intent to sell properties before actually selling them to maximise community engagement. I totally support that, and I also totally support the idea 
that some properties are of low strategic value and therefore they should be traded in for properties of higher strategic value. In this case, we can see that at 3.2 on page 11, of the seven properties identified, two are classified as public land. And in proposing to sell these assets, what is our plan for after they are sold? And that's what I was teasing out before. Clause 2.1 says the revenue raised from these sales will go to undertake much needed upgrades on council owned recreational assets. So that's all we know. Clause 9.3 says proceeds from the sales will be used to upgrade recreational infrastructure such as those identified within council's open space strategies. But what specifically are we trading off here? So if I went to trade in my car without having a very clear idea of what I was going to drive away with, I might end up walking home. Before I sell my house, I have to have a very clear idea about what I'm going to do with the money from selling that house. I fully understand the reason why you would want to trade in low value strategic assets in return for higher ones. But if we note that from that Bruni property, in 2002 we tried to sell it and it caused quite a, an amount of community upset because there was no alter nobody really understood where that money was going to go and what it was going to be used for. And all I've been asking today is that just like trading in a car, I understand the logic that you want to trade low strategic value in for higher ones, but you have to know to, to make that trade off, you have to know what you're going to get in return. And at this stage, we don't know what we're going to get in return. Now, let's take that Bruni one, for example. Forgive my cynicism, but I'm not satisfied with the statement at 6.1 on page 20 that says, Bruni Island, Main Road, Alonna. No inspection of this site has been conducted. It appears from imagery that there are no natural values present. Just 10 minutes' drive down the road is Inala Nature Tours, where they boast 96 of the 151 bird species in Bruni. 96 of them are on the property. And looking at the satellite image of Inala Nature Tours, you can't see any of those 96 species either. I guess that's why people actually have to visit the site in order to make that determination. Now, I'm not saying that that site does have any natural values. I'm just saying we need to do a little bit more work and have a little bit more of a plan before we advertise our intent to the community to sell these things. Selling assets is a trade-off. We trade these seven assets in return for something else. And right now I can see half a plan. I can see the cart before the horse. We've got the plan to sell them, but we don't have the plan specifically to do anything with the money. And we don't have a, an enforceable in instrument that says we definitely will spend it within 12 months on these specific playgrounds. So that's why I'm not comfortable with it. The principle I understand and I support but I'm just not comfortable creating community unease about selling a bunch of properties without having a clear-eyed idea about what we're going to do with that money. At the end of the day, this is only half a plan, in my humble opinion. It's a plan to sell off council-owned assets and public space. It's not an investment strategy. It's not a cost-benefit analysis. It's not future planning. In my opinion, it's short-termist. I think it's knee-jerk and ill-conceived, and I think it's fraught with risk in terms of community perception, and so it doesn't have my support. Thank you.